guys and welcome back to my channel. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm so excited to be bringing you this q and A. I I did ask on my social media if you guys would submit questions um, so that I could make this video for you. I did want to try to keep the questions specific to relationships. So if you did ask a question that was non-relationship uh, related, then it probably will not appear in this video. But anyway, um, I know I can get long winded. So let's go ahead and get started. Question number one, what type of things do you make and cook at home for Valentine's Day? Um, I think what I would love um, for a Valentine's Day meal would be a surf and turf. So if we did a steak dinner with maybe um, some like shrimp or some lump crab or lobster at home, that would be delicious. Do you give your husband a Valentine's Day gift? Uh, I would if he would allow me to. Uh, I definitely always buy cards, but he's not um, much of like a, a gift receiver, I guess if that makes sense. Um, but I'm glad to accept the Valentine's Day gifts. Okay, number three is a relationship one. How to keep calm when you're mad at your significant other for being far away. Um, well, if you are in a relationship with someone and it's a long distance relationship, I hate to say it, but you knew what you were getting into when you decided to become that person's boyfriend or girlfriend. So you can't be happy with them and say, oh yeah, I wanna be in a long distance relationship with you because I just like you so much or because I love you so much, but then be mad at them for not being close to you either. I think at the beginning, you should probably set ground rules and say like, I would like to see you this much and you guys kind of work out when you're gonna be seeing each other. Um, but you have to remember like you kind of signed up for it, so don't hold it against them. I don't think long distance relationships are for everyone and if you find that that's um, not the type of relationship that's for you, it's probably best to end it. Have you ever or currently dealt with jealousy issues or relationship anxiety? Um, I would say yes, not in my current relationship and we have been together since 2010, but I definitely did in college, um, I had, uh, a boyfriend back then who I really liked and I thought he was very cute and so I was always worried that like other girls would find him very attractive as well and then I would you know get upset or if I knew that he was going to be in a group of people and I wasn't there I would get jealous and and he wasn't even doing anything I truly don't think that he did anything to me behind my back but it was just an insecurity thing I think the best way to deal with that especially if you're older like me I'm 30 um, at this point be confident in yourself you know how good you are you know what you have to offer and if a guy can't see how great all the things that you have to bring to the table are then you don't need to be with him you need to be secure until basically until your man gives you a reason not to be the next question was who was your first valentine what did they get you i love you by the way happy valentine's day happy valentine's to you um my very first valentine would probably be my high school boyfriend his name was everett i'm pretty sure he may have bought me jewelry but yeah i mean it was nice but we're, we don't have any communication now i don't know what he's up to um and i've probably had maybe two or three other valentines since then but yeah he was the first one it was cute the next question is when did you and brandon meet we met when we were 16 and 17 in high school but we did not date until we were 20 and 21 and seniors in college what argument do you seem to have most often so when i saw this question come in i knew i wanted to answer it but i don't know if I have a good answer and I don't want to come off as one of those people who like, oh, we never argue because that's not the case at all. We do, but we don't argue often. And honestly, we don't really argue about the same things when we do argue. I can't think of something that's been like a constant, constant argument for us. I don't know, but I do think that the reason why I'm struggling to answer this is because we are the type of people who kind of just lay it all out there. We know what we do and don't want to continue to happen. I'm not the type to keep arguing about the same thing and neither is he because we kind of resolve it the very first time or try to so that if it comes up again, we already know how to handle it. And I think that that's just how every conversation should be even things that don't turn into an argument you kind of need to just resolve it because who wants to keep arguing about the same thing i don't think we argue about any one thing over and over again your dream gift from each other like birthday or christmas gift i think my ultimate dream gift would be like a matte black g-wagon if i could get that or a friend and got that for me i <sighs> I would never ask for anything ever again. I'm trying to think what Brandon's would be. I think I asked him this before and I can't remember what he said, but Brandon's big on experiences. So he would probably want like a trip somewhere or I don't know. I'll have to ask him again. The next question is what's both of your love languages? My love language is words of affirmation and gifts and Brandon's is acts of service. I know that I'm going to get the biggest smile and like the warmest reception from Brandon if I like, 
do things around the house or if I do something for him that he didn't ask me to do and not necessarily like giving a gift but just like like he comes home and like all the laundry is done or all the, the the dishes are done he'll never make me feel bad about it but he also like he's just so excited on the inside and I and I know it so I try to do that for him would you be a stay-at-home mom even if you didn't do YouTube does Brandon prefer the income so this kind of isn't a relationship question but since you mentioned Brandon I'll answer it um I was a stay-at-home mom before I did YouTube for I think six months and I would have probably continued on that way had I not have started my channel. I will say though Brandon does prefer the extra income that has been coming in. I don't think he would be upset if I stopped YouTube but I definitely don't think he is uh, upset that I I do it either. <laughs> um, what are little ways to let your man know you care? So for me um, I like to like and this is like easy stuff like if I know that Brandon has a load of laundry in the washing machine I'll move it forward because we don't do each other's laundry and then I'll fold his laundry for him like that's just something really small but the reason why I guess it's a bigger deal for us is like I said we don't do each other's laundry or if we go out to like say the store and I'm buying groceries like I'll make sure I get something I know that he wants but he didn't necessarily ask for even if it's just like a drink we kind of do that for each other and those are small easy things if your man is like really rushing in the morning to get to work maybe like lay his clothes out for him the, in the morning or the night before and help him in that way those are like cute little things that I think any wife or I guess if you live with your partner you could do um, you could always send a cute text or send a card or even send like a little plant or just do something that lets them know like hey oh she's sweet tell him you're proud of him tell your husband or your partner you're proud of him and that um, you're really happy th of the life that you have together little things like that even just words or texts mean so much what has been the biggest change in your relationship since becoming a mom so at the very beginning you guys know I had postpartum really bad and I think I pushed Brandon away and just wanted to do everything myself um, because I just truly felt like no one could care for this baby like I could but I think that having the baby really helped me to see that he and I are a team and that everything we now do will affect our son I think now more than ever I consider Brandon my teammate because we are responsible for a life uh, that we both created. I think I, I'd like to say like oh yeah we're on the same team we're married but it wasn't until we had Bash where I realized how important that is and I think that that's the biggest thing that has changed because it wasn't about me anymore it was about our son so we needed to work together. This was a question that I got a lot in various different uh, ways but it was how do you cope with the loneliness on nights when Brandon is out of town. Honestly, this is the truth. I'm up really late at night. I don't sleep well when he's not here. Um, I am usually texting my friends until late at night, um, and I know he has to work, so he can't really talk to me, you know, late at night. I guess the way I cope is uh, I know in my heart that he's doing what he loves and he's doing it to help our family. I can't really be upset with that, so I just deal with it. I don't know. It's it's hard. I'm not going to sit here and pretend it's not or like I don't cry sometimes. But I just know deep down he's not gone because he doesn't want to be home. He's not gone because he doesn't love us. He's just working. If he wasn't working, we wouldn't have the life that we have now. I kind of just have to remember that and keep my feelings pushing I guess is what I'm saying um do you 100% trust your hubby when he's away in another state yes and um, if I didn't I wouldn't be married to him I I could not be married to someone who I was worried about every time he left if ever I truly felt like he was going to go off and do something that would be it because that just shows right there that I don't trust my husband um, of course you know things can happen especially in the industry that he works in there's women everywhere but because he hasn't given me a real reason to feel that way, I just can't. And like I said earlier, you have to be confident in who you are. But if they're really willing to risk your relationship and everything you've built together, they didn't deserve you. But don't live in fear over that because it'll only eat you up and he could be over there reading his Bible in his hotel room all by himself. And you're going crazy. It's not worth it. Oh, I like this question. How long is too long to wait on a guy to act right? If you are anywhere between 25 and 30, don't wait long. There are too many men out there who are ready and willing and able to settle down and be everything you need them to be. If you're 19 through 22, your guy's fresh out of high school, your guy is still in college, they're young, I wouldn't really hold it against them then either, but you got to know what you're working with. So if you are working with someone who does have a good job and they're moved out of their mom's house but they're acting like a child still and not treating your relationship with respect, 
don't wait around for that because there is going to be someone else and the biggest thing my biggest 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 piece of advice and you may hear me say it multiple times in this video is do not settle just because you really like the person because if you settle three or four to five even ten years down the road you are going to regret it and you would have just been much happier if you would have waited another year or six months even to for the next guy who was going to treat you right don't settle don't wait long especially if you guys are older and by older I mean like just not teens or like young 20s if he's not ready keep it pushing I don't even care if you guys have children it's not worth it what advice would you give a single mom that is looking for a godly man um stay true to yourself if you are looking for a godly man look for him in places where the holy spirit resides so maybe at church and I'm not saying that you can't meet a godly man anywhere else, but I'm just saying maybe that would be the first place you would go because you want someone godly and they're praising God at church. Look to see if your church has a singles ministry. Maybe ask one of the, the leaders at your church if they know someone because they probably won't set you up with someone who isn't like-minded. And in the meantime, stick to your morals and values, make your list. And like I said, don't settle until that right man comes to sweep you off your feet. This one's kind of like the other one, how to avoid getting jealous or deal with jealousy know who you are like i said earlier what you bring to the table be confident in who you are and know what you will and won't tolerate no woman should be allowed to make you feel jealous no woman ever look at yourself in the mirror and say i am worth something i am good and if he can't see that then you don't deserve me but i want every woman to feel so confident about themselves that like it doesn't matter you know that anybody could walk past him do not feel jealous over some girl who either a is clueless to the fact that um she's even being looked at or b who is purposefully trying to make you jealous you're already better than that this question i love because i get this a lot um how to prioritize your marriage and intimacy with a toddler and a hubby with a busy schedule my first instinct is to say there's always time to be intimate because your children go to sleep at some point but then i have to remember not everyone's situation is like mine where he sleeps in his own room and sleeps all night sometimes you gotta get creative it doesn't always have to uh, be in this type of setting if you know what I mean I think that that keeps it spicy and I think that sometimes it's it's a quick thing but you just have to make time and honestly um, scheduling it there's nothing wrong with that put it on the calendar just like you would put any other thing that you have to do and make time for it because sometimes it doesn't just happen like when you're looking deeply into each other's eyes if the alarm goes off and it's time get cracking. What is your favorite date night activity? I love going to dinner. It's probably my favorite thing to do. I think now because I've been married uh, for this long and Brendan and I have been dating, I don't mind going to dinner and then a movie. But if I'm just dating someone, I did not like going to the movies on a dinner date. And if I did, I would always want to go to the movie first and then have dinner after because you lose a lot of prime time of getting to know each other and talking in the movie theater. And sometimes if you're like kissing in the movie theater like teenagers, you're not really getting to know that person anyways um okay I liked this question because uh, oh this would I guess be a challenge now that I'm thinking about it how do y'all handle in-law issues getting along or somebody doing something that upsets you or your spouse this has been something that we have dealt with I will admit that I have not always handled um, the situation properly um, as you know Brandon has two sets of parents one set of we get along brilliantly the other set it's a little touch and go sometimes and i think that at times i tend to just shut down when i shut down there's just not really a lot of communication happening and it's not in a a mean way it's just i just we don't communicate at all and i know that that's probably not the most effective way to move uh, on with relationships but i think that i never want to come off as disrespectful or say something that i can't take back as far as brandon and my parents are concerned everything is fine there it's mostly me i will say that i do think it's important that your spouse is on your side because at the end of the day it's you two who are in a relationship it's one thing if you've done something wrong toward um, your spouse's parents um, because then you need to apologize but if maybe the parents 
wronged you and you truly didn't do anything your spouse needs to be on your side and maybe talk to the parents and say like hey like this was a little bit out of line this person is my wife or my husband if, if a male is in this situation and we need to come to some sort of resolution that has been our situation and I think that it's been really helpful to not feel like I was alone but I will say from experience having done this and not done this try to keep your wits about you keep your dignity and don't lose it because it just makes the situation even worse try not to be disrespectful even when discussing things with your spouse because that is still his parents or her parents and try to settle it especially if you have kids because at the end of the day your kids are going to miss out on a relationship with your in-laws if you aren't happy and you don't really want that at the end of the day okay how do you express your feelings when you're upset or you don't feel like he understands you in the times when I've gotten upset I tend to cry before I lash out in anger. I think that if you jump to anger when you're upset, he's automatically not going to listen to you. And honestly, I wouldn't listen either if I were him. Try to remember that you can be angry and keep a soft tone. Now, it is hard because I have been in other relationships and with my husband where I feel like he's not getting my point. But just explain yourself. Say what you need to say. He'll probably have something he needs to say in return. And if he doesn't understand, as long as it's not life-threatening, agree to disagree and move on from it. There's no point in continuing to go on in circles. Now, if this is something that he should not be doing morally and just doesn't understand your your feelings about it that is something different because that's something you will and won't stand for but if it's just like he doesn't see your point on something that probably isn't that big a deal in the grand scheme agree to disagree what attracts you most to brandon um well physically i think he's really attractive i love his face i love his body he's very fit and in shape his personality is really what did it for me he's always been driven and hard working he's always had a job and want to you know get to the next level and the next level even when we were younger he treats me like a princess and i'm not just saying that i truly sometimes question what i've done to deserve him because he's so good to me and that is attractive you want to feel like like you're the most important thing in their life and I know his whole world is me and Sebastian and that security and that protection and how he provides and how he loves our baby like those are all like the most attractive thing I've ever seen in my entire life how do you keep things interesting in your relationship if things are kind of getting in a rut in the bedroom like do something a little different I had a friend who told me when I got married to save all of my Halloween costumes that's all I'm gonna say about that do things together that um, that are kind of like break up the monotony so instead of on a Saturday y'all sit at home because you're just happy to be off work make plans but do something together with just each other get a babysitter and go do something you haven't done before that will lead to conversations it may lead to them finding something out about you that you didn't know that's a positive how did Brandon propose oh I'll have to tell this in another video because it's kind of a long story but he took me up to Lake Lanier and he tricked me to get me there because I was waiting for it and honestly the story is hilarious I'll have to tell it another day and one thing I told him before we got engaged like maybe months before was I wanted to um, have a photographer there I wanted him to say my whole name I wanted him to ask um, for permission from my parents and I wanted um, him to get down on one knee which is a given but I just needed to make sure he knew that and he did all of those things and it really meant a lot to me but he had to trick me there so I didn't have on like my prettiest outfit and my hair wasn't done but it was the only way that he could have pulled it off and it was so so nice does your husband ever complain about the house being messy when it is ever messy okay the house gets messy all the time if I'm filming I try to like pick up a little bit but sometimes y'all know I don't but no he doesn't and I appreciate that more than he knows the house can look like a bomb went off because some days it's just that difficult Brandon comes home jumps right in never complains never makes me feel like i didn't do enough honestly he's so helpful when he comes home if the house is messy that it makes me feel bad because then it's it, it's kind of like he's so helpful to a fault because then i start to feel like i should have done more or you've just worked all day and i couldn't keep the house clean but he always tells me your biggest priority is Sebastian. So if that means y'all played all day in the playroom and you couldn't get anything done in the house but the baby was taken care of and he was happy all day, then he's like, then you've done a good job. I try to not have it to where the house is just completely a wreck 
in every room the playroom our room bash's room the kitchen and the living room like i try to have like a good bit of it um clean but i get so much satisfaction when um he comes home and i've cleaned the whole house and he's like oh my gosh it looks so good in here because then i know that he can spend more time with us but he has never made me feel bad about it and i I know that I that that's not the case for everybody and I just feel so so blessed the next question ooh, tips for telling very strict parents that you're dating okay so I think the first question I would ask is how old you are and if you still live at home with your parents if you are dating age like 15 16 up to like right about to graduate from college 21 22 uh, and you still have at home I'm sorry you got to follow your parents rules if they don't want you to bring um, your dates to their house don't if they don't want boys in your room don't if you're living in their house unfortunately you got to listen to their rules if you don't want to listen to them move out now if you are between like 22 23 graduated from college you have a job you may not be paying rent at your parents house or older like 25 28 29 30 some people still live at home with their parents at that age my parents would have let me live at home forever if I wanted to and I didn't pay rent living there I think you probably need to have a conversation telling your parents as someone who is an adult that you're dating that is something natural your parents are married so they understand how important it is to build a relationship with someone before you get married and I would sit down and say like look I admire your marriage this is something that I would want for myself too but it's going to require me meeting and getting to know a guy that doesn't mean that you need to bring the guy up to your bedroom at your parents house if you're living there Brandon was never allowed in my bedroom even when we were engaged i think the only time brandon ever came into my bedroom before we got married was when i moved home from college because he was bringing stuff from the car into my bedroom and then when i was moving out like right before we got married and i started moving my stuff from my parents house into our apartment together and he was helping me then he never stayed the night in that room he never just hung out with me up in the room at at my parents house because they didn't play that and we were engaged and i was 24 turning 25. but i would say to your parents like i would like to bring this person over to the house and i would like you to get to know them maybe until they start to trust the person that you want to date um just have them come to your parents house think of things that would help ease your relationship um into your parents maybe have if the person is really into you have some dinners with your parents maybe once a week they go over and let them get to know your new boyfriend or the guy you're seeing um, until they trust him I guess enough to let you out it's kind of hard because they don't know how old the person is but try to appease your parents they love you at the end of the day they just don't want to see you get hurt and I totally get that try to make it easy on everyone and if the guy really is willing and and wants to date you he will just go along with it until he wins them over and y'all can go and start seeing each other um and we're coming to the end of the questions how do you guys stay connected when Brandon's on the road so much we talk all the time we text all day long we FaceTime probably three or four times a day I think maintaining that communication is really important in order for you not to forget about each other and then when you know they do come home connect physically all righty and the last three questions are very quick so gift giving ideas holiday birthday anniversary advice what's your favorite perfume and what are you guys doing for Valentine's Day this year okay so my favorite perfume is Chanel Mademoiselle or Tom Ford Black Orchid there are others that I really like um, but those would probably be my very favorite ones gift giving ideas so it really just depends on if your partner is like an experienced type of person um, or if they like things but uh, you can't go wrong buying clothes um, I also think that if your partner is into something specific to buy them something along those lines so if your partner likes to cook buy them like a really nice knife set if they like experiences try to find something like a like a little weekend getaway or like a bed and breakfast Brandon and I did a bed and breakfast and we went horseback riding and it was so beautiful because he knows that I like to ride horses zero in on what they really like and then try to expand upon how you can make that hobby or whatever it is that they like even better if you know that your partner is really into jewelry maybe get them something custom and it doesn't have to be like custom diamond rings but maybe like a little necklace or a little um 
like a bracelet like this necklace is so simple it's not expensive at all it's a monogram necklace something small like this could go a long way um i'll have this link below i do have a discount code down below if you want it and just anything like that just try to expound upon something you know that your partner is into because it really looks like you've taken an interest in whatever they like and and men really love that um and then lastly how are we spending our valentine's day so i think that we're going to be cooking at home and um, just spending the the night here together. If you guys wanna see more relationship type of content, please leave a comment below. Let me know how much you liked this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. I hope everyone has a fantastic Valentine's or Galentine's Day. 